Interpreting the Revelation with Edgar Cayce. A Commentary on the Endocrine System. By J. Everett Erian. The endocrine system is important to our study of the Book of Revelation. The ductless glands play an important part in our awareness. The readings say that every force or energy in creation works through the endocrine system. See a commentary on the Book of Revelation for all these readings. The following diagram of the body shows the location of the seven endocrine glands. Glands are transformers of spiritual soul energy into physical body energy. Glands transform energy from the soul to the mind and body. These transformed energies keeps the body alive. Note also that the body needs air, food and water to stay physically alive. Energy in the form of vibrations results in hunches, dreams, visions, or even words. Glands are contact points for the soul to communicate using vibrations to the body and mind. Many readings explains how the endocrine system works. Ductless glands of the endocrine system and their activities are referred to as the churches in the book of Revelation. Astrological forces or energies influence or communicate with the body and mind through the glands using vibrations. C5, the creative forces in the body, on how and through what endocrine centers the forces of the soul reaches our consciousness. In the following reading 28116, the importance of the churches to the total consciousness of the endocrine system by the actions of an entity is explained clearly. Why we are here on earth is also given. The visions, the experiences, the names, the churches, the places, the dragons, the cities, all are but emblems of those forces, or energies, that may war within the individual in its journey through the material, here on earth, or from the entering into the material or earthly manifestation to the entering into the glory, or the awakening in the spirit, in the interbetween, in the borderland, in the shadow. As the churches, in the endocrine system, are named, they are as the forces or energies, that are known as the senses, that must be spiritualized by the will of the individual made one in the very activities in a material world. The elders and the lamb are the emblems, are the shadows of those acceptances or rejections that are made in the experiences of the individual. In the various manners and forms that are presented as the vision or visions proceed, every force or energy that is manifest by a soul is of one source, but the soul, the will of the individual, either make such into a coordinating or cooperating influence in bringing about more and more manifestations in the material world, earth, of those experiences that are seen from the spiritual conditions, or the opposite, that is, material or earthly to spiritual. Why, then, is it presented, ye ask, in the form of symbols? Why is there use those varied activities? These are for those that were, or will be, or may become, through the seeking, those initiated into an understanding of the glories that may be theirs if they will but put into work, into activity, that they know in the present. In seeking, then, do individuals find from the beginning that there is presented, in every line, in every form, that good and bad, as termed, that arises from their activity, in what they do about that knowledge they have respecting law, the love, the mercy, the understanding of the wherefore of the Lamb's advent into the world that they, through his ensample set, may present themselves before that throne even as he, becoming, as given, heirs, joint heirs with him, as the sons of God, to that everlasting glory that may be had in him. Let's turn our attention to the readings explanations of the functions of the physical body mental body and the unconscious or universal forces. Refer to the book by J. Everett Erie entitled Vibrations, explaining the actions of the various forces, or energies, working through the endocrine system. How the endocrine system handles color, universal symbols and our conception of time, space, and patience. The book focuses more on vibrations whereas here we are focusing on the endocrine system and how we use them.
The relationship between the body and soul forces point to a need for the many revelation references. The reading 281, 38 below, reverting to first principles, the cells of our body reverting back to its original purpose, has a direct bearing on the birthing of the Son of Man in each of us. The concept is the reason for many trials in varying relationships pictured in the overcoming of self in the revelation, as well as the functions of each physical organ in the body. You will give at this time a discourse on the endocrine glands of the human organism, discussing their functions in relation to physical body and their relations to the mental and spiritual forces. Yes, we have the activity of the endocrine system, as may be described from this body here. A discourse, to be of help or aid, may not be finished under 15 or 20 series, for this is the system, the endocrine system, whereby or in which dispositions, characters, natures and races all have their source. Little of course is as yet known or recorded as to the activities of same endocrine system. For these are being discovered or rediscovered by man in his search for the anatomical structure of the human body and are continuing to be found. Hence, as is the natural thing, they are not present in a dead body. Hence those influences or opportunities that have been given to man under varied circumstances from the study of the anatomical structure in a way or means or manner in which they may be observed, namely, through the digestive system, and even about this very little is known. For only this one portion in the animal kingdom and in the history of medicine has been studied by observation. So in the study of the glandular systems that work within the glands or the organs, or the active forces of a physical body, these become then only those that may be seen or observed as from an individual activity, and thus are only relative, or may be correlated to others as they may be observed in that which is produced within same. For as has been indicated in some manners, some activities, there is an activity within the system produced by anger, fear, mirth, joy, or any of those active forces, that produces through the glandular secretion those activities that flow into the whole of the system. Such an activity then is of this endocrine system, and only has been observed in very remote manners, or just here and there. Only the more recently has this activity received that consideration from the specialist in any activity in the relationships to the human body. And as has been indicated by those who are possibly leading the whole of the revolutionary activities as related to these, in making for the visibility even of the circulatory system, there is to be considered ever the whole activity, not as separating them one from another, but the whole anatomical structure must be considered ever as a whole. Then we would give, to be as brief as possible in this short period, though for you to be aware, or gain much it will take 8 to 10 to 15 such periods for a really instructive influence. What are the activities of the glands? Most every organ of the body may be considered a gland, or at least there must be within the functioning activity of each portion, as the eye, the ear, the nose, the brain itself, the neck, the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs, the heart, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, that which enables it to perform its duty in taking from the system that which enables it to reproduce itself. That is the functioning of the glands. Not as a whole only, but as individual well as the whole. Hence there is then in the system that activity of the soul, that is the gift of the creator to man. It may be easily seen, then, how very closely the glands are associated with reproduction, degeneration, regeneration, and this throughout not only the physical forces of the body, but the mental body and the soul body. The glandular forces then are ever akin to the sources from which, through which, the soul dwells within the body. As an illustration, for this may be very brief for this particular period, but that you may grasp an inkling even of what you have begun. Let us consider the race question. Why in the mixture of races is there in the third and then the tenth generation a reverting to first principles? Remember, we are speaking only from the physical reaction. Because that period is required for the cycle of activity in the glandular force of reproduction to reassert itself. How is it given in our word? That the sins of the fathers are visited unto the children of the third and fourth generation, even to the tenth. 
This is not saying that the results are seen only in the bodily functions of the descendants, as is ordinarily implied, but that the essence of the message is given to the individual respecting the activity of which he may or must eventually be well aware in his own being. That is, what effect does it have upon you to even get mad, to laugh, to cry, to be sorrowful? All of these activities affect not only yourself, your relationships to your fellow man, but your next experience in the earth. This is indicated in this particular body which lies here, through which the information is being given, you call him Casey, John would be better. There are those very influences, or energies, as used or manifested, in those periods of activity, in indulgences, as we have indicated, which have magnified such activity, of the glandular system. Hence in the present actions, as related to the physical forces of the body, these make for a continual warring against those influences or activities within the system. This same reverting to first causes, cells and glands going back to, or not going back to, its original purpose, may be seen in others when there has been the self-indulgence in any manner. Hence as you may see about you, and which is coming to pass. Why is the race of the people in America growing taller and taller? The exercising of the glandular forces, as related to the activity, that produces within the system, the extension of the physical structural forces of the body. Fast, rather than thinking. The glories of self, rather than the glories of God. Monstrosities or giants, or such active forces, are the results from, the glandular secretions, produced in the system, and these show themselves, again and again. The next reading 281, 46, focuses on the endocrine system and physical conception. You will have before you, the members of the glad helpers, gathered here. You will give at this time, the first of a series of discourses, on the endocrine system in the human body, presenting this information in such a way, as will aid us in understanding, the functions of each of the seven major glandular centers in relation to other glands in the system, heredity, temperament, character environment, physical, mental and spiritual growth and expression. You will answer the questions, as I ask them. Yes, we have the group, as gathered here, their purposes, their desires. In giving that as may be understandable, in the study of man, man then as the inception and conception, into that from the purpose, desire, and its relationships to the universe and universal consciousness, it will be well to follow, in the first, what the happenings are in conception the growth and the determining factors. As to that growth, spiritually, mentally, physically, by and through the word of that creator. Man was given the ability to create through self a channel through which the manifestations of spirit might be made manifest in a material world. As is observed in such, there needs be first that of desire, purpose. It is known as a fact that this may be wholly of the carnal, or animal nature on the part of even one, and yet conception may take place, and the end of that physical activity is written in that purpose and desire. Then it is evident that there is the ideal, as well as the partial or whole carnal force, that may be manifested or exercised in and through such activities, as to bring a channel of mental, spiritual and material expression in the earth. The ideal manner, first, is that there may be a channel through which the spirit of truth, hope, divine knowledge and purpose, may be made manifest. What then, ye may ask, are the spiritual, mental and physical variations that may take place under the physical activities for varied expressions? It may be seen, that from the same source, even at the same period of conception, there may come quite varied expressions, or characteristics, in the individual expression, manifested. Desire, first, create certain forces, about which, there is a physical nucleus, that is the pattern of the universe, with a number. Thence it is given by some sages, that each entity, each expression, in a material experience, has its number. Yet the more often there is the guess, or mistake, as to what physically, caused there to be a number, for an individual entity. There may be all the variations possible, represented in their digits, from one to nine. This means the variations of the positive and negative influences, or the neurons or electrons, 
or forces that form that vibration, upon which that individual entity will or does vibrate, at its period or source of conception. And each relationship of its vibration to the universe is relative, according to its number, in relationships to influences and environs, heredity, as well as those influences, which are part of its conscious experience. Thus the greater unison of purpose, of desire, at a period of conception, brings the more universal consciousness, or being, for a perfect, or equalized vibration, for that conception. As an illustration of such, that this may be wholly, or in part, by some, understood. When Hannah desired that there be an expression, that God, the universal consciousness, had not forgotten, that there were prayers and alms offered, was there wholly the lack of selfishness? Or was there the shadow of jealousy? Then we find, there was the promise of the dedication, and the purposes, that this expression, would be wholly given the Lord, ever. Yet it brought into being an entity, though dedicated, as few, yea, as none other individually, to the Lord, unable of himself, to give that expression, which would keep his own offspring, in the same vibration. Thus, we see the relative relationships, of the electrons, the neurons, the positive, and negative forces, brought into being, at the period when there begins, the opportunity of conception. Then, when such takes places, no matter as to what may be the vibrations, that are set by the union of body, of mind and of purpose or spirit, at such a period, for, to be sure, these are as varied as the individual, there remains the ideal manner. But, ye are asking, what physically takes place? Is it a physical activity of a gland, an impulse, a heartbeat, that becomes an influence for activity, through the body so conceived? The cord that is eventually known or classified as the pineal, is the first movement that takes place, of a physical nature, through the act of conception, determining eventually, as we shall see, not only the physical stature, of the individual entity, but the mental capacity also, and the spiritual attributes. Reading 281, 51, gives information about the endocrine system, which helps us to understand, the effects of vibration, upon the body. Also explains, that the spirit of our actions, are the moving force, in whatever we do. Spirit is the life-giving force, in every condition, whether of mental, or material action. We have the soul as, the body of the spiritual force, manifested in the individual. The importance of the awareness, of the spirit of our actions, is found in this concept. For soul's development, is in the earth's plane. This same reading below 281, 51, touches upon the psychological functions, of the four elements, earth, water, fire and air, which are the building blocks, of our temperaments, body of characteristics, by which we recognize and react to them. See the elements for more detail. You will have before the Glad Helpers prayer group, members of which are present in this room, and their study of the endocrine system in the human body. You will continue with the discourse on this subject. Yes, we have the group as gathered here, as a group, as individuals, and the information which has been indicated through this channel. In continuing with the subject, and as we come to the application, of that which has been indicated, let that which is given here and now, not become confusing. For, it will require deep meditation, upon such, that ye may get the correct insight, which ye will not be able to put into words at first, and will know when ye know, but by the experience of coordinating physical, mental and spiritual attributes into one. For, as given, few have conceived of, or attempted to analyze, the effect created in a physical body, through the mental impressions received, or conceded, that there is an activity spiritually, that may go on, in active force, within the human body. For, so oft we see contradictory effects produced in the activities of the individuality and personality of persons. Also it has been and is hard for individuals to conceive of Adam sinning in a material world as a man, a son, made by the hands of God. Neither is it easy to understand the illustrations used from the life of Kish, who conceived through righteous desire, a son, a channel chosen, 
for a manifestation of material power, in a material world, given through the choice of the maker himself, and yet the individual, in his personal relationships, defied even that, which had been prophesied, by himself. Few can conceive of the body, through which the Prince of Peace, manifested, the Son, the first and the last Adam, as having been a channel for material desire, when considered as a body so purified, as to bear that perfect one. Yet, all of these facts, are demonstrated in the life of each individual. There has long been sought, by a few, the interpretation of the seven centers, and many have in various stages of awareness, or development, placed the association, or connection between physical, mental and spiritual in varied portions of the body. Some have interpreted as of the mind, motivated by impulse, and thus called the center from which mind acts. This is only relatively so, as will be understood by those, who analyze those conditions, presented through these interpretations, for in fact the body, the mind and the soul are one, in the material manifestation. Yet in analyzing them, as given through the revelation by John, they are active, in the various influences, that are a part of each living organism, conceived in the forces, making up that known as man, that power able to conceive, in mind, of God, and to demonstrate same, in relationships to others, that in mind, able to conceive of manners, for the destruction of its fellow man, little realizing, that it is self being destroyed, by that very activity. Then, why are there such contradictions within those very influences? As is said, in the heart, love finds its way. Love is conceived as of God, as of all pleasant, as all giving, given in that great expression, indicating to what power, it may arise, God so loved the world as to give his only begotten Son, that through him we might have eternal life. Yet the other side, or the reverse of love, is suffering, hate, malice, injustice. It is the reverse. Why? What is that about man's activity in body, as an individual, that causes such? This has been indicated, through those patterns, which have been used, as illustrations, of what took place, in the union of bodies, that through desire, hope, conceived or prepared in conception, a channel through which, all this contradiction, might be made manifest. Is the first cause, then, that the separation of God and the desire for companionship with himself, that has created or brought into a material manifestation the reverse of love, of hope, of patience, of all the attributes that are the spirit of activity, the moving influence or force. This we see manifested in a physical body through the glandular system, as the activity of conception, the dividing of the activity of the gland itself, that brings conception. Thus, this is the first of the centers from which arises all that is movement, to bring into being both the face and the preface, or the back, or the reverse, in the experience. It carries with it, what? That mind. For, remember, ever, the pattern is ever the same, mind the builder. Conceived, then the first movement is along that center or gland which either fades, or becomes a channel along which there may move the power, and might to find expression, through the very activities of the organs of the body itself. Then the next is the pineal, through which the brain forces, make manifest, either in its determining factor, there of becoming mighty in stature physically, or dwarfed, as may be understood by the face, as may be said, that is held to, by the individual separation and combination, of the activity of the glands in that period of conception. Hence there arises, the race condition or contour, or the figure of that beheld by that choice, in its activity as it has separated itself, from the first cause, or first premise, by the very will of the Father God in the beginning. Then there is the third, that is ever of the feeding or building nature, or the basic cord, through which during the period of gestation, there is fed the imaginations, as well as the latent response of the body, to those conditions external, or that center from which, there is drawn the growth in the physical. Then there becomes the first indication of individuality being established in that movement which has come about in its growth, its evolvement, or the gland of the solar plexus, or that you misinterpret and call the adrenals, as they act with the emotions and the growth and unfoldment of the body itself. There begins then the gland, the heart, 
through which courses begin to flow, and then the gland, the liver, its counterpart, and then the spleen, as a balance, the thyroid, as the outer individual begins to show activities for self-protection, or the first laws of nature, as would be made manifest in the material associations. Then there are the general, or the whole of the activities through the system, as in the thymus, all of the centers of activity through which spirit first moves from the Leiden, the center of the spiritual forces, the brain, or the highest force individually or personally, then the others in their order as they control themselves. Then within each of the organs themselves, though they each are, in the main, glands, the functioning, is stimulated by the activity of each organ's ability, to assimilate that needed, from the environs, as well as, from that upon which, it is fed, to grow into that direction, given by the mental purpose, the mental desire, of the personality, as it, as an individual, makes itself manifest, in a material environ. Hence we find, as has been interpreted, for those who would interpret, the seven centers, the seven churches, the seven activities to which an individual physical activity is prompted. The next reading 2475, 1, explains the experiences when we apply the yoga and breathing exercises. Yet our focus here is not on the yoga exercises and breathing, but on what happens in the body, endocrine system, and the relations of the soul to the body, through the endocrine system. You will have before you the body and inquiring mind of 2475, in special reference to the yoga exercises with which he has been experimenting, in breathing. You will indicate just what has taken place in the body and what should be done from this point, considering the best physical, mental and spiritual development of the entity. You will answer the questions as I ask them. Yes, we have the body, the inquiring mind, 2475, and those conditions, those experiences of the body in the use of yoga exercise in breathing. To give that as would be helpful to the body at this time, there might be indicated for the body something of that which takes place when such exercises are used, and the experiences had by one so doing. These exercises are excellent, yet it is necessary that special preparation be made, or that a perfect understanding be had by the body, as to what takes place when such exercises are used. 4. Breath is the basis of the living organism's activity. Thus, such exercises may be beneficial or detrimental in their effect upon a body. Hence it is necessary that an understanding be had as to how, as to when, or in what manner such may be used. It would be very well for the body to study very carefully the information which we have given through these sources as respecting meditation. Then this information, as may be given here may prove of beneficial effect in the experience of the body. Each soul, individual or entity, finds these facts existent. There is the body physical, with all its attributes, for the functioning of the body, in a three-dimensional, or a manifested earth plane. Also there is the body mental, which is that directing influence of the physical, the mental and the spiritual emotions, and manifestations of the body, or the way, the manner in which conduct is related to self, to individuals, as well as to things, conditions and circumstances. While the mind may not be seen, by the physical senses, it can be sensed by others, that is, others may sense the conclusions, that have been drawn by the body-mind, of an individual, by the manner in which such an individual, conducts himself, in relationship to things, conditions or people. Then there is the body spiritual, or soul body, that eternal something, that is invisible. It is only visible to that consciousness, in which the individual entity, in patience, becomes aware of its relationship, to the mental and the physical being. All of these then are one, in an entity, just as it is considered, realized or acknowledged, that the body, mind and soul are one, that God, the Son and the Holy Spirit, are one. Then in the physical body, there are those influences, then, through which each of these phases of an entity may or does become an active influence. There may be brought about an awareness of this by the exercising of the mind through the manner of directing the breathing. For, in the body there is that center in which the soul is expressive, creative in its nature, the Leidig center. By this breathing, 
this may be made to expand, as it moves along the path, that is taken in its first inception, at conception, and opens the seven centers of the body that radiate, or are active, upon the organisms of the body. This, in its direction, may be held, or made to be a helpful influence, for specific conditions, at times, by those who have taught, or who through experience, have found, as it were, the key, or that which one may do, and yet must not do, owing to whatever preparation has been made, or may be made by the body, for the use of this ability, this expression, through the body forces. As this life force is expanded, it moves first from the lydic center, through the adrenals, in what may be termed an upward trend, to the pineal, and to the centers, in control of the emotions, or reflexes, through the nerve forces of the body. Thus an entity puts itself, through such an activity, into association, or in conjunction, with all it has ever been, or may be. 4. It loosens the physical consciousness, to the universal consciousness. To allow self, in a universal state, to be controlled, or to be dominated, may become harmful. But to know, to feel, to comprehend, as to who or as to what is the directing influence, when the self-consciousness has been released, and the real ego, allowed to rise to expression, is to be in that state of the universal consciousness, which is indicated in this body, here, Edgar Casey, through which there is given this interpretation for 2475. So, in analyzing all this, first study the variations of what has been the body temperament, in thought, in food. 4. The body physical becomes that which it assimilates from material nature. The body mental becomes that it assimilates from both the physical mental and the spiritual mental. The soul is all of that the entity is, has been or may be. Then, who and what would the entity have to direct self in such experiences? To be loosed without a governor or a director may easily become harmful. But as we would give, from here, let not such a director be that of an entity. Rather so surround self with the universal consciousness of the Christ as to be directed by that influence as may be committed to thee. Thus the entity may use constructively that which has been attained. But to prevent physical harm, mental harm, attune self in body and in mind with that influence by which the entity seeks to be directed, not haphazardly, not by chance, but as of old, choose thou this day whom you will serve, the living God within thee, by thee, through thee. Or those influences of knowledge without wisdom, that would enslave or empower thee with the material things which only gratify for the moment. Rather choose thou as he of old, let others do as they may, but as for thee, serve thou the living God. Thus ye may constructively use that ability of spiritual attunement, which is the birthright of each soul, ye may use it as a helpful influence in thy experiences in the earth. But make haste slowly. Prepare the body. Prepare the mind, before ye attempt to loosen it in such measures or manners that it may be taken hold upon by those influences which constantly seek expressions of self rather than of a living, constructive influence of a crucified Saviour. Then, crucify desire in self, that ye may be awakened to the real abilities of helpfulness that lie within thy grasp. Just what preparation would you advise for the body, now? This should be rather the choice of the body from its own development, than from what any other individual entity or source might give. Purify the body, purify the mind, that the principle, the choice of ideals as made by the entity may be made manifest. Do whatever is required for this, whether the washing of the body, the surrounding with this or that influence, or that of whatever nature. As has been experienced, this opening of the centers, or the raising of the life force may be brought about by certain characters of breathing, for, as indicated, the breath is power in itself, and this power may be directed to certain portions of the body. But for what purpose? As yet it has been only to see what will happen. Remember what curiosity did to the cat. Remember what curiosity did to Galileo, and what it did to what, but they used it in quite different directions in each case. Considering the development of the entity, 
Is further practice of the yoga exercises of breathing and meditation recommended? By all means. If and when, and only when, preparation has been made, and when there is the knowledge, the understanding and the wisdom, as to what to do with that gained. Without such, do not undertake same. The question and answer in the next reading 28154, is important to our glandular study, because the factor of will, is introduced. The will, of man differentiates him from the animal kingdom. Will, is a personal factor that keeps man from being classified as a mere biological organism, animal, even though he has reasoning abilities. God made the mineral, vegetable and animal kingdoms, then out of these he made man and breathed into him the breath of life. Adam, who at that period was devoid of any of the spiritualized cells of the physical body, had a stronger urge to revert to physical desires. Yes and no. Consider that, whether it is mineral, vegetable or animal, these are spiritualized in that ability of using, doing, being all that the Creator had given them to do. Hence man was given that which is not a part of mineral, vegetable or animal kingdoms, though man, by man, is considered of the animal kingdom. Will, with the environmental forces and the spiritual negative in the serpent, acceded to desire, to become and to experience in that kingdom of influence. This brought the acceptance, by man's own will. The next reading 28157, answers the questions of The soul's connection with the body The source of impulse that goes through a living body The developing fetus through gestation to birth These questions are not only pathological, but also mental and spiritual. The activities of the endocrine system are the basis of our handling of the elements, earth, water, air and fire, which is the building blocks of our makeup, that is, our temperaments, by which we are recognized by others. This idea is a most important aspect in our study of the revelation. This idea is more fully developed in three. The elements. The correlation of ideas found in this reading 28157, with other general subjects about the essence of man, may entice others to study scientifically the endocrine system, as presented by the readings. You will have before you the Glad Helpers Prayer Group, members of which are present in this room. You will consider their work and study on the endocrine system of the human body, and continue the discourse on this subject, answering the questions that may be submitted, as I ask them. Yes, we have the work of the prayer group, its purposes, its aims and desires, and the studies thus far made of the endocrine system. In continuing a discourse, or in giving information regarding same, it would be well before too much information becomes burdensome, that what has already been given be better understood, either by the attempts of individuals to discuss same, or by the compilers setting in order those activities that are related to the physical, the mental and spiritual development. As may be easily indicated, some of the activities of the glands relate to the purely physical functioning, yet the physical functioning in a life-giving body must of its very nature be empowered with mind and spirit. Ye have interpreted, and have data indicating what, where, when, there are the various stations or centers in the body function physically, and how these also are analyzed as to their activity, in a physical sense, and how they each are related to the mental body, and the relation its relative activity bears, with the spiritual forces of the body. Thus this group, should be able to answer, to self, at least, that question which has not been answered since man began to think. Where is the dwelling place of the soul, in the physical body? What is the connection or center through which the mind and the soul function, that makes one individual a devil, and another a saint? These should be the studies. Then, they may be applied to that purpose for which this group came into being, aiding seekers to find health, understanding and prosperity in their own environs. Then, find the answers to these in that ye have attained, in that which has been given. Ye comprehend that though there may be the complete development to manhood or womanhood, the fetus in its activities, the gland of reproduction, becomes the source from and through which impulse acts. Thus it is the source of propagation throughout the experience. 
ye have gained that the first movement of same physically reaches out and becomes the brain, through which the pineal in its activity brings its physical development, and that it is related to the mind of the body and the environs of the body supplying physical activities to that developing physical entity. Ye know that it reverts then to the brain of the nervous system, to the solar plexus center, and then reflexes, through its own mental activity to the physical forces of the still developing body. Ye know that when such a body has developed, when gestation has been completed and it becomes an entity in itself, because of its center through which all physical and mental impulse has passed, it is then cut asunder, and yet functions on. Why? How? These are not merely pathological questions, but mental and spiritual also. We have presented readings on the endocrine system. The focus here is on the way the endocrine system handles natural body forces, or energies, relative to the mental and spiritual development rather than to the pathological. Of course, much of the glandular activities involve psychological functions also. The inherent and inheritable qualities of memories are urges, both from the parents and the entity incarnating are handled in for the son of man. Careful reading of all the readings on the endocrine system, especially regarding the forces, or energies, from the impulses to the pineal and their return to the solar plexus, allowed J. Everett Erian to arrive at the idea regarding the operation of the elements. C3. The Elements. The endocrine system readings should be studied from a pathological and psychological standpoint. Also the spiritual connotations and religious implications. It is important to note the movement or flow of the energies, creative forces, from the universal, or inherent body ones, from the glands of reproduction and propagation throughout the life experiences. See charts in 5. The creative forces in the body. Once our desires are formed, they receive their impulse to life from the Leiden center, or cells of Leidegg, which cells are in the gonads and the adrenals, and rise to the pineal, from which they return to the solar plexus, for the impulse through the body, throughout life. These forms become our temperaments, our psychic grids, personality characteristics, etc., so that we become known by the expressions and life we give to our concepts. God creates the body, we create us in the way we are known, our personalities. I am that, I am, becomes very earthy.